Well, hello again from Kingston. I want you to know that although I mention people by name from time to time, there's no disrespect intended to every member, man and woman, on this project. They all do, and they will continue to do until the very end, a tremendous job for all of us. If you like the updates, please consider subscribing. I'll catch you at the end, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. There should be few surprises left on site, but I hadn't really expected to see Sousa back completing work on the West End. Their work was characterised as usual by hand-finished attention to detail. AMG Metals returned to the bridge on Monday too, filling in some of the small remaining gaps in the north side railings. A steady cavalcade of trucks going in empty and coming out filled with gravel signalled that its removal from the temporary causeway was still in full swing. The effort to remove gravel was no less intense on the east side. Efforts to remove temporary brackets and safety structures saw both bridge buggies opposite one another on the end of the steel span. And just a little further along the bridge, the Genic machine was observed supporting similar activity. Meanwhile, below the library, bar construction were continuing work to create a new service road leading up from the holding pond. And the talented team from Sharp Landscaping continued to beautify the area surrounding it. Tuesday brought further evidence of the removal of now redundant items, including this sea can and some massive steel plates. A load of lumber that had been accumulating over several days finally departed across the bridge behind a prime mover from Mulrooney. Still on the west end, Staff from Black and MacDonald continued work to prepare the lamp posts and traffic signals for service around Ascot Road. And at the west abutment, hand painting of the side lane treatment for the concrete was taking place. The normal application by spraying is undesirable when vehicles are passing nearby. At the east end, in the bright sunshine on the south side of the bridge, work was going on to remove the brackets. Some of which can put up quite a fight. But the crew remain the undefeated champions. Not a great deal of sunshine on the north side of the bridge where patching and fixing were taking place. Work continued on the east end to build the service road and to lay topsoil in the area around the holding pond. The day's highlight for this tech nerd was an opportunity to see how the Genic machine actually deploys. Wednesday demonstrated the Genic's role in removing brackets and finishing work on the north side continued. Sharp landscaping continued to bring in topsoil for the area around the holding pond and to work it. Near the library, a team from local company M. Cud, infrastructure specialists, conducted a video inspection of some of the drains. A 
of the eastern shoreline work to prepare the last catwalk for removal from Pier 21 was taking place. With vehicles moving around all the time below, on the west side, silane painting of the concrete was taking place from a bucket lift. Even late in the day, the flow of trucks removing gravel and the work to extract it continued unabated. And there was no let up on gravel removal in the east. There was a surprising development which could have been anticipated when an excavator from Barr began removing the old docks on the west side, north of the bridge. Thursday saw work to remove the brackets from the south side of the bridge continue. Around the easternmost spans, working with a pump spray, silane was applied to the concrete finish of the multi-use pathway. Refinement of the new service road on the east side continued, with a little bit of help from sharp landscaping. And as you can see here, the roadway is really beginning to shape up nicely. However, even as Barr continued to extract gravel from the east shore, the day's highlight occurred. Much of the early part of the day had involved cutting away the various timber frames and structures from the catwalk. With all the timbers removed and only the steel beams remaining, free of its bucket, the excavator approached the steel beam and was connected. With the bucket lift clear, very slowly and carefully, a sustained effort to withdraw the steel beam began. When the midpoint of the beam became accessible, the telehandler moved forward to support it. Disengaging the excavator arm allowed the telehandler, in a very controlled fashion, to lift and remove the beam. And then all that remained was to lay it down gently. Friday was a largely unremarkable day with all the usual activities and the threat of rain throughout the morning. I thought that it might be an idea, rather than going over old ground, to show you some views of the bridge as we stand in mid-November. Don't worry, all the equipment and the trailers you see will be gone relatively soon. But now it's time for wildlife and the odd surprise.
So that was quite an eventful week. Some interesting and unusual video, especially in the wildlife. Don't forget to watch next week as we draw closer to the end of the project. Thanks again. Till next week. Bye for now. Thank you.